Mr. Gibbon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At the heart of this issue is victims of terrorist violence and also everyone in society being equal before the law and equally subject to the law. The secret deal that took place with Sinn Féin and the, the Blair-led government that was continued by the Conservative and Liberal coalition to provide letters of comfort to Republicans on the run was a denial of natural justice. The Belfast Agreement was a betrayal of victims. But at least, at least it did have democratic legitimacy. This party campaigned ferociously against that agreement. The Ulster Unionists, the Alliance and others campaigned ferociously in favour of releasing prisoners and inflicting the pain and hurt on victims when they watched those people walk from jail. We campaigned against it, but ultimately the people voted for it in a referendum. This, however, had no democratic legitimacy. It had no basis on statute. It was an act of treachery on the part of the government engaging in a dirty deal with Republicans. Of course, Peter Hayne shamelessly comes on and says it's necessary to have bought off the provost so that there could be peace. Necessary to deny these victims the opportunity or even the basic hope of ever getting justice. The denial of natural justice can never be justified. I will. The member uh, for giving way. Will the member now then uh, share our revulsion and understand the revulsion of many within the nationalist community that the British government paid their informers and allowed agents of the state to willfully murder Catholics and others? And, 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 and their anger at that. And we share the anger of this dirty day. We order, share your order. anger at the dirty day. The member is not a minute on his time. Order. Well, and here we have the irony that Republicans on the one, one hand were being given a de facto amnesty, but yet want to pursue people that served in the British Army, that wanted to pursue people in the Royal Ulster Constabulary. Any wonder Whenever the deal that was put forward at Parliament was reneged upon, Sinn Féin got their letter from Tony Blair to say, I'm going to get this sorted out before I leave office. They knew they had a deal with them, but wanted to keep pursuing the state forces that they make all these allegations about, and therein lies the hypocrisy. Imagine, Mr Speaker, the response that would have came from Sinn Féin if three days ago it had been announced that British soldiers involved in Bloody Sunday and other state actors, as they want to call it, had been given letters and a special scheme was set up. Imagine the response that would have came from the Pat Finucane Centre, from Amnesty International, from the relatives of justice, all of whom have been silent when it comes to Republicans, of course. So the hypocrisy in it stinks to high heaven, and this party was right to oppose it and to take a stand against it. Then, of course, we've got the double speak. Theresa Villiers said, this was a Labour scheme that we inherited. Uh, it's now a devolved matter. Of course, we found out 38 people have received this. Whatever it became, a devolved matter. They continued with the scheme. Alex Maskey said unionists knew about it. Jerry Kelly said it had to be kept a secret because there would have been a crisis. Basil McRae said he knew about this four years ago, but kept it secret. I think members know if he, if he knew something for four minutes of this nature, he wouldn't keep it secret. And then, of course, what we, what we can have in this inquiry is, let him tell us what he knew. Did he tell his colleagues in the Ulster Unionist Party at the time? Let's have this inquiry that we now have so we can ask David is. Trimble what he knew, what Red Jempy knew. Yeah. So here in yeah, yeah. this... Well, we, 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 we will, this inquiry will ask anyone who has information. We're not afraid of the truth. Others the are afraid order, order, of the order. truth. So whenever we have people putting up the smoke screen and Martin McGuinness is running about like Corporal Jones, don't panic, don't panic mode. Who's he really trying to tell Mr Speaker to calm down? I, sus I suspect it's the comrades in the IRA that people are trying to calm down on the benches opposite because they now know this piece of paper because of the actions taken by my leader and this party have now made it null and void. And let me put into the record exactly what the Northern Ireland Office has said. We will take whatever steps that are necessary to make clear to all recipients of letters arising from the administrative scheme in a manner that will satisfy the court and public 
that any letters issues cannot be relied upon to avoid questioning or prosecution for offences where information or evidence is now or later becomes available. Cut through the distraction and the smokescreen. That is the fundamental issue that this party has now secured. Others would say, let's go back to direct rule. My party leader and this party has used devolution to get the result that the on the runs are now again on the run. We have used devolution to get an Order. inquiry and Order. let us get to the Order. truth. And then we will see who is making all of the Order. smoke Order. screen and the noises that they now try to throw up and distract. Let us have it on the record. We should be thankful. All of us should be thankful because Mike Nesbitt never threatened to walk away from the executive. David Ford never threatened to walk away from his post, but my party leader put his job on the line and he's got the end result, and we should all be thankful for it. Order, order.